Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. This is the sixth episode of the series where I review no taking apps on the tablet six. And in this one, we're going to be taking a look at a very special app. As you've seen from the title and thumbnail of the video, we're going to be reviewing the Samsung Notes app which wasn't a true competitor, to be honest, until recently that it received an incredible update in which they included some features that could make it your new favorite note-taking app. Sounds interesting enough? Don't forget to subscribe if you want to keep up with my future uploads. And now, let's start with the video. Okay, so I actually had another thing planned out for this week, but Samsung decided to release the biggest update in quite a while to their Notes app, so here we are. I've been testing the new features for a few days, and if you don't know them already, and you're just here to see which are the new features, you're seeing them right now on screen. So before this update, I used to use this app as a place to add thoughts or things that I needed to remember, like passwords or motivational phrases or things like that, but that was also before I got the Tablet 6, so I was typing all of these things on my phone instead of writing them with the stylus or something like that, okay? So keep this in mind because it's going to be fairly crucial in a bit. Anyways, the first thing we always check is the organization method of the app. In here, you have your folders down at the bottom of the left panel. Also, you're always able to tap the icons on the panel. You just have to open it if you want to have an in-depth view of your folders. As you're seeing, you have different categories like old notes, old format notes, which holds the files you had before this huge update. You can also manually mark your notes as favorites. And there's also a category called frequently used which automatically stores the note that well, you frequently use. You can have shared notebooks, and from what I've used it, it seems to allow you to obtain and give access to other people to some of your and their notes. Again, from what I've used it, you can only see, you can only visualize other people's notes. You're not able to edit them initially, you'll have to download them to your device if you want to do so. You can also assign tags to your notes, and there's a cool thing you can do with this, I'm going to show that in a second, and there's a trash category that holds for 15 days the folders and notes you delete. After those 15 days, they are permanently erased from your device. Now, the important thing here is folders. You can create as many folders and subfolders as you want. Quite literally, I got to 12 folders, then I stopped creating them because I think 12 is more than enough. Also, as a fun fact, folders have a 30 characters limit for their names. So if you're taking a class with a long name, I have one called Concepts of programming languages, then you basically have to cut some words out to make it fit. And the cool thing I was talking about before with tags is that, for example, I like to create folders which hold subfolders with all my classes for the semester. So in this case, I have a fall 2020 folder with four subfolders for the classes I'm taking. And the cool thing is that if I'm enrolled in a computer science class, I can create a tag called computer science or CS. And if I ever need to recall something from one of those classes, it is way more convenient to just just go to your tags and select computer science instead of going through all your semester folders to see in which one you can find it. And because you can assign multiple tags to your notes, it's almost like you can have multiple organization methods, which is really useful in my opinion. But leaving the organization methods behind, once you create a new note, you have this toolbar at the top of the screen, which you can now unpin and move around to wherever you like best. And before we go even further, if you go to your settings and tap toolbar add-ons, you have this four add-ons that I totally recommend you enable, and I'm going to explain each of them in just a moment. There are some features which you can use if you're planning on taking typed notes, which is what I used to do before I got the Tablet 6, and is what I still do when I'm using my phone. You can play with the text size, font color, font background if you want to create a highlight effect, and you also get some formatting options like indentation, alignment, and you can create a bullet or a numbered list. There's also an option for you to include checkboxes. Also, at the very top, you have the name of your note in which folder is currently stored, which you can also change from here. And as I mentioned before, if you want to manually add that note to your favorites. Now we start with the good things. When you tap on the first icon of the toolbar, you switch to ink mode. And you can now see all the different tools the app offers. The first tool is your primary input method. And you can choose from five different types of pen. From my testings, the most noticeable difference are the fourth pen, which looks like a pencil and it's pressure sensitive. Sensitive. Then the second pen draws flat edges, and I'm almost sure it's direction dependent. The fifth pen has this grainy look to it on the edges, and it's super pressure sensitive. And finally, the first and third pen actually look 
pretty similar to me. The only difference I could find is that the first pen is pressure sensitive and at the end of the stroke it actually fades a little. I don't know if you can see it. And the third pen, it doesn't have that fade at the end and it's actually velocity dependent. So it was pretty interesting to see that Samsung decided to create these presets of default pens with different types of dependencies and overall styles. You can also choose a value for the size of the pen from 1 to 100 and you can also change its color. By default you get three different palettes and if you tap the last icon on the right you can select a different color which is then going to be stored in the recent color section. In here you get a color picker or eyedropper tool whatever you want to call it and you can also access a wider variety of palettes to choose up to a maximum of four to include to your regular selection. Additionally to all of this if you find yourself using a type of pen and color very frequently you can mark it as your favorite and if you have your toolbar in a decent spot you can access it every time you tap the pen icon or if you think that's too many steps you can also unpin this favorites panel and have it floating around on your screen for a quicker access or if that's still not what you want you can always tap the S Pen button to switch between your favorite pens okay hope that wasn't too much information at once but moving on you also have highlighters too if you want to be specific one that draws straight or boxy lines and the other one that draws more rounded lines these go behind your pen input and they do accumulate but they don't get to a point of completely covering your initial input in the same manner as with the pen tool you can change its color size and mark it as one of your favorites next we have the eraser which can be set to delete strokes or a specific area, which is fantastic. I completely love that. An interesting thing that I found is that when you try to erase a highlight, they have like a higher tolerance to the eraser. I don't know how to put it into words, but as you're seeing, you can have the majority of the eraser touching the highlighter and it still requires a little more for it to be deleted. I think it's useful if you're trying to erase a certain powerful word and not delete the highlight, but it can also be a problem if you're trying it the other way around. There's a selection tool that can be set to be a rectangle or a lasso and it needs to cover the entirety of what you're trying to select if you miss even a small part you'll need to reselect it next to this tool we have one that can help you align or straighten your handwritten notes it also allows you to space things properly so if you have three sentences when you tap the icon of this tool the space between them adjusts so that it's evenly distributed next we have the first add-on which lets you convert your handwritten notes to typed text. It works flawlessly, it is Samsung's technology so you can have high expectations for this. Regarding customization for this tool, you can customize the language and if you want it to result in a text box which you can then adjust its placement and size or you can set it to be a plain text. Then we have a regular undo and redo and next to them we have the other three add-ons that we enabled a couple of minutes ago. The first one lets you change the color and size of the pen of your previously made handwritten notes. Now you might be thinking, oh, but it doesn't let me change the type of pen I use. And well, it makes a lot of sense because as I explained before, different types of pen depend on different characteristics, that is velocity, pressure, or direction. So a pressure dependent one doesn't store information about the velocity you use. At least that's the explanation I could find it. The last add-on is used to help you draw better shapes. It works pretty good. You can draw non-perfect shapes, which is something you sometimes need. And to erase one of these shapes, you have to touch and hold it and then choose to delete it. I don't know why, but none of the erasers have any effect on them. And last, but definitely not least, we have the Easy Writing Pad add-on. And they have a love-hate relationship with this thing. It is a zoomed box that helps you write while still being able to observe the majority of the page. I had been using it one night while multitasking, testing some of the new features, and the next day, before one of my classes, I said, you know what? Let's actually test this app. I've never used it during a lecture, and I wanted to test if I could see myself using it on a day-to-day -day basis. After a few minutes, I decided I wanted to use this feature the zoomed box. And guess what? It was blocked. And at the same moment, professors started making questions about the lecture. And it's a really, really small class and we had our cameras turned on. And there I was, trying to figure out why in the world this feature decided not to function in that specific moment. Well, turns out you can only use it on portrait mode. 
or if you're multitasking, which is kind of similar to having on portrait. And to be honest, I don't see the logic behind it. It is a very useful feature. It works nice as it's supposed to, but you cannot use it when you're on landscape mode. It doesn't make any sense to me, but moving on, if you're not trying to edit your notes, you can tap the first top icon and the S Pen stops writing. The next icon is for you to have a better view of all the pages. You can add, eliminate and rearrange them as well as bookmark some of them and you can look up anything you want. It can be typed text, handwritten notes or content on a PDF, which is one of the new implementations of this feature. You can now not only add images, drawings, audio files and text boxes, you now have also the possibility to add PDFs. You can annotate over them and you can also use the search feature to look anything that's inside of such files. Another new feature is that when you record an audio file inside of your notes, you are now able to see what you were writing at any specific moment of the recording. This is super useful, especially if you tend to record the lectures of your classes and you just want to write keywords instead of writing a whole paragraph. Also, you don't have to wait for the audio to see when you wrote something. You can just tap the word and the audio jumps to the right moment. Also on the attachments, there's a pretty interesting one called drawings that I'm not going to get into because the video will just get too long. But there are a lot of different drawing tools. There are some that can be used to mix some colors. In here, you can also modify the size and opacity of the tools. And it's an additional feature that's not crucial, but I can see how a lot of people can benefit from it. And it's always nice to to see a tool implementation of this kind. If you want to share your notes, you can choose to share them as a Samsung notes file to open it on another notes app, also as a PDF, a Word file, an image, a text file, and with the new update, you can also share it as a PowerPoint presentation. If you don't want to share it, if you want to have it on your device, you can tap the save as file. You have the same options, but you can now choose where you want to store the resultant file. However, one thing I want to point out is that with the new update, you can set this transparent background and the dark mode of your device, if you have it enabled, applies to that node. However, that doesn't mean the background is black. When you export it, the resultant file is going to have a white background. That's because the actual background is white, but if you have dark mode, it probably automatically checked the apply dark mode to background option. This is important because if you actually want your nodes to have a dark background and you choose the dark background, turns out the black ink you were using is actually white and the white ink is actually black. I mean, I get it. It's probably not going to affect a lot of people. It's probably even convenient to some people, but I thought I needed to mention it just in case some of you didn't know it. Additional to this customization, you can now also choose different templates for your pages as well as add more from your gallery. I wish they added a document version to add PDFs and I understand you can do this by using the new feature of importing PDFs, but it will also be useful to have them on the template section for an easier access. And if you're wondering how to make your notes as individual pages instead of an infinite scrolling one, you can now go to your settings and under note style, you can find the option to toggle this customization option and now that we are on the settings you can see you can lock your notes with either a fingerprint or a password the cool thing i accidentally found is that you cannot screenshot or screen record protected notes that makes sense once you know it but i thought it was pretty cool when i found out about it you can also choose if you want to show links in your notes if you want to see web previews that is when you for example decide to share a youtube video and you get a small thumbnail and a little text of the video and also you can choose if you want to enable action icons what are these you may ask well, there are four types of action icons. They appear whenever you write something related to them. First, we have phone numbers. So if you write any seven or eight, 10 digit number, when you tap it, you're going to be taken to your phone app. You can also do this with email addresses, website links, and math equations. Nothing too complicated though, because it is handled by Samsung's calculator app. Other than that, you can choose how you want to store your screen of notes. I have it to be the same I see when I write it. And with this, you can see the advantages you get by having a note-taking app developed by the same company that made the device. You get a screen of notes, the best writing experience in my opinion, obviously you make like another one better. You also have more functionality from the S Pen button. And most importantly, you can sync your notes across many devices seamlessly. No troubles, no manual labor, 
no cloud services other than the Samsung Cloud. By the way, something I found interesting and it really shows the big jump from the previous version of the app to this one is that you cannot edit your previous notes. Remember the ones on the old format notes category. You can actually edit them, but you have to convert them to the new style of notes of the new version of the app. If you want to do so, you first need to install a Samsung Notes add-on and then you're able to read and convert if you want your previous notes. So yeah, a very complete app. My personal thoughts, I don't know why, but I don't see myself using it as my go-to app for taking notes of my class lectures. I read a similar comment a few days ago and I think it said something about the UI of the app. And that probably makes sense. You're not seeing notebooks, you're seeing notes. And to be honest, I also have a conflict with my mind because if you remember, I've always used this app for years as a place to just put my thoughts and recently to quickly store something through the screen of memo feature. So it's been a little difficult to start thinking of it as a place to have college related stuff but it's just a matter of time i mean it's been about a week so i think in a few more weeks of me using it constantly this may change but i want to know your opinion in the comments let me know if i missed something i had to rush this video because this was a huge update and i wanted to cover it as soon as possible and also there were a lot of you that actually asked me to do the video so thank you for suggesting content and for wanting to see more of my videos if you don't follow me already on instagram you can do so with the link in the description in case you want to send me a dm to suggest a video idea or just to talk and for now this has been a regular teenager take care peace